I'm the genius Asian. Welcome to the genius family. Today I'm going to show you how to install a dual flash system and I guarantee you will not see anything like this anywhere else. This brand is Fluid Master. There are two main items in this package. One is the flush valve, the other is the refill valve. This is a newer design of the Fluid Master conversion kit. The older design has the tube from the refill valve going into the flush valve. For the newer design, the tube from the refill valve goes directly into the overflow tube. Thus, the two valves are completely separate. My refill valve is still working. There's no need to replace it. Check out my previous video for Danco brand. There are three differences between the unit installed in that video and this. First, the refill valve has this blue clamp. This clamp is not on the parts list. The installation instructions do not discuss it at all. I can't believe the manufacturer failed to mention it at all in its installation guide. It only appears in my video because I do my research independently and diligently. Please subscribe to our channel. Later in the video, I will show you how to adjust this roller so that you can save water. A second difference is how this Fluid Master deals with an angled base by using an angled seat adapter. The other design worked for an angled base without an adapter. If your base is not angled, it is already flat, and there is no need of this adapter. The third difference is how to adjust the amount of half or full flush. With the other model, the valve adjusted the float up and down. This valve turns the dial. When you turn the dial, it turns this rod. The thread on the rod moves this block up and down. We need to adjust this dial so that the amount of water flushed is not too much or too little. This green dial with a half dot is for the half flush. The dial marks 1 through 10. The manufacturer's instructions call for setting the dial at the max to begin and then decreases to 9, 8, 7, 6, and so on. While beginning with the maximum is easy to understand, this manufacturer's instructions may require you to waste too much water before finding the right point on the dial. You may think that starting from 5 will waste less water. However, while that may be better, it is still not the optimal starting point. The optimal starting point is the 0 0.618 of the to total length. For example, our dial has points A equal to 1 to B equal to 10. So we should start from this formula, which means we start from the dial equal to 4.4. Using this dial value as the new B, or A value, we can generate the next optimal test point. I have calculated the subsequent possible sequences. This method is called golden section to guarantee that you flush the least number of times before finding the correct level. The test results should indicate if we are flushing with either too much or too little water. Adjustments are made and the test is repeated until the optimal result is achieved. So, with the optimal golden section ratio, 0.618 search, you may perform the flush tests that waste water no more than five times. These are the paths for three times. These are the paths for four times. But if you follow the manufacturer's instructions, the worst case could be as many as 10 tests. The above optimization is the best if you don't know anything about the underlying system. If you do know something about the system, you can use that knowledge to your advantage. For example, because you watched my video, if your system is similar to mine, you could start from two. We spend a lot of time on the dial adjustment because if each person flushes six times daily, that is 2,000 times a year per person. So much for the math. Let's get into the installation demo. If you install both the refill valves as well as the flush valve, then turn off the water supply. If you only replace the flush valve, then you can jam the refill valve like this. Mark these three water levels. Mark the water level in the bowl as B1. This level will adjust the amount of water that goes into the overflow tube. Mark the water level in the tank when full as T1. I used masking tape since it can be soaked in water. This will provide you a reference point in case there are any unexpected results in your installation. Flush, and then mark the water level as TS. 
This level will tell you later on if you have saved any water. See, after the flush, the water level in the bowl is also lowered. So the amount of water flushed by the single valve is T1 minus TS. Keep pressing the lever to flush all the water. And while it is draining, try to stir and push the sediment that typically accumulates in the tank into the drain. Remove the existing flush flapper. Remove the existing handle. Note that the lock nut on the handle is an uncommon left-handed thread, so don't break it by going the wrong way. Clean and dry the base. Look at the base. This is an angled one. Install the angled seat adapter. If your base is not angled, it is already flat. In that case, there is no need of this adapter. This gray stuff feels like Play-Doh. It is a sealant ring to seal the adapter. The arrow points toward the overflow tube so that this side is leveled. Use the sealant to make the adapter watertight. Align and push the flush valve onto the seat. Align the arrow on the valve to the arrow on the seat. You should hear a click to indicate that the valve latched onto the seat. Note that if you did not align the two arrows, it is not a big deal. You can also rotate the valve to align it. Install the handle. You may or may not need this black rubber square ring because it is for the bigger holes on the tank. Note that this thread is also a left-handed thread and you need to turn this nut counterclockwise to tighten it. The handle lever needs to be horizontal. The handle actuator should be vertical. Press the button with the spring, push it into the handle. Release the button so that the actuator locks onto the handle. Lift the lever up to perform a half flush. Pushing the lever down will perform a full flush. Let the water in through the refill valve. Now we need to adjust the half flush level. As we discussed before, we start with a dial equal to 4.4. Drop three pieces of toilet paper into the bowl. Add some soy sauce to assimilate liquid waste. We jam the refill valve. Lever up to perform a half flush. We mark this half flush with dial 4.4 as HD 4.4. Notice that HD 4.4 is below TS, which could mean 4.4 uses more water than the single valve. But be aware that because the new, bulky duo flush we installed is larger than the single flapper, it may not mean that we use more water than before the change. Now I use the measuring cup to fill the tank from HD 4.4 to TS. It is HD 4.4 minus TS equal to one cup. So please pay attention to the water adjustment here. You don't want to pay more money to install this duo flush and then end up using more water. If it flushed successfully, turn the setting down to 2.3. If unsuccessful, turn the setting up to 6.6. .6. Here, we use the golden ratio again to calculate the next optimal point. For our case, it flushed successfully, so we turn down to 2.3. It flushed successfully again, so we turn down to 1. When we did one, it could still flush, but we can't dial down any further. To solve this problem, you can turn the black stick counterclockwise to decrease the water level. Say we mark it as T2. Now I use the measuring cup to fill water to raise T2 to T1. From T1 to T2 is four cups of water, enough to give us one extra dial. Because now there is less water to refill, the bowl is only filled at B2, lower than our original B1. It is possible that using the matching refill valve from the manufacturer may provide more water. We will explore this later. So at this time, all four factors contribute to flushing less water. One, we have less water to flush. Two, we have less water in the bowl. Three, we did not add our own urine. Four, there's no bidet water. Note, bidets are not very common. 
Note that not knowing the second and third reasons may require you to set a higher dial value than necessary during your test, leading to small but still daily water waste. When we flush it, we see the water rising. The liquid waste is diluted. However, we don't see a complete flush. This means that after we lowered T1 to T2, there isn't enough water to cause the siphoning effect. Please check out my other video to hear the five second gurgling sound and understand the siphon effect. Since the flush was unsuccessful after we lowered T1 to T2 with the dial equal to one, so we turn back to dial equal to two. It does flush well, so we leave the half flush at dial equal to two. If we used the manufacturer's suggested method, we would need to test 11 times. With our golden section, we only tested four times, saved time and water. We used the golden section for half flush in the range from one to 10 because we didn't have any testing data. Our half flush test for our toilet was two, but for you say it is X. For the full flush test, if we use the golden section again, the search range should be from X to 10. And the starting point is this formula. We could use the golden section to search again. However, since we know a little bit more, we can cheat. We set the full flush one dial higher than the half flush. The manufacturer recommended dropping six pieces of toilet paper in the bowl. Of course, the best is to wait till after you emptied your bowels because that is the only real solid waste test. Push the lever down perform a full flush. If it is a successful flush, stop. This is your full flush. If unsuccessful, turn the setting one dial higher. Our best one was dial equal to three. If we jam the refill valve, we can see we used this much water. We have many marks. Now I use the measuring cup to fill the tank and record all measurements. We see each increment of the dial is about three cups. Now we can calculate the amount of water as follows. Half flush equal to 0 0.875 gallons. Single flush equal to 1.3 gallons. Full flush equal to 1.44 gallons. People who are used to a single flush may likely push the lever down instead of lifting it up, even though they intended to do a half flush. Since liquid waste is more frequent than solid waste, one solution to this may be just to swap the two dials, setting the full flush at two and the half flush at three. It is pretty easy to switch it from one to the other. And if for some reason you want to flush even more water than a full flush, you can just keep holding the lever. The flapper will close only when you release the lever. If you flush this way, your duo flush system becomes a three or more flush system. Next, I will go over instructions for those people who want to install the refill valve. You need to turn the water valve off and drain all the water in the tank. You remove the old refill valve. You will see a one inch diameter hole on the toilet tank. The black rubber shank washer should point down with the flat side face up. The valve will go down to the hole on the tank. Screw the fill valve lock nut from the bottom of the tank. Connect the refill tube to the clip. Clip onto the overflow tube. There are two ways to adjust the heights of the float. One is a larger rough adjustment. The top of the valve needs to be three inches higher than the overflow tube. You adjust the height by turning the shank. The second is a smaller, fine adjustment. You adjust the height by turning this black stick with a thread at the bottom. This height ensures that the float will stop refilling at the level we marked originally. If the water is higher than our mark, then turn the black stick counterclockwise to decrease the water level. If the water is lower than our mark, then turn the black stick clockwise to increase the water level. This blue clamp adjusts the rate of water going into the overflow tube, which means into the bowl. The water that comes from the pipe will split and go into two different places. One goes into the tank, the other goes into the overflow tube, which reaches the bowl. 
The one that reaches the tank will raise the float. The float will stop the flow. There is no waste of water if the water in this tank reached our mark and at the same time the water in the bowl reached this level. If the water flows too fast into the overflow tube, then after filling the bowl quickly to this level, the excess overflow water would just flow into the drain, so you are wasting the water. If the water flows too slowly into the overflow tube, then there is not enough time to fill the bowl to this level. Solid waste may stick on the dry bowl wall, and it is not easy to clean. So when you adjust how much water you waste, you should use the half flush to adjust. See, you move this roller this way to make less water flow in. There are zero to eight tick marks. With our golden section 0.618 method, you should start first at the position five, equal to 4.944. Flush the toilet. If it overflows, then you increase the number for less water. If it underflows, then move the roller to decrease the number for more water. The above optimization is the best if you don't know anything about the underlying system. If you do know something about the system, you can use that knowledge to your advantage. For example, you can estimate how much water you could save. First flush, after water reaches the mark, feed the tube to a water bottle. See, more than a bottle of water will be wasted. The goal of the adjustment is to slow down the flow so that this much less water should flow into the bowl. If your refill valve does not come with this kind of clamp, no problem, you still can check out my other videos for alternative ways to save water. I can let some water spill at the overflow tube, thus less water is going into the bowl. See, this way is timed perfectly, that is, the water level reaches my mark on the tank at the same time as the water reaches the mark inside the bowl. Share this with people who you know that need it. Leave your own genius tips in the comment section below. Don't forget, I'm the genius Asian. Subscribe for more useful videos.